gut health, uh, gut health. I want to share with you a few ideas about two things. One is the perseverance in recruiting new people in the team. And then number two, talk about self-talk. I think most of you have heard about self-talk in many, in many training sessions, but I want to share with you some ideas about how self-talk can influence our success or prevent us from becoming successful. So if you give me a few minutes, I want to share this with you. Remember last week we, we discussed this W. This W stands for the work we do, the sponsoring process. And this is what helps us to recruit new people in our team. Um, recruiting simply means you get people into the business. Sponsoring process is a bit more than that. It means you actually take responsibility If, I'm, if I'll just go back uh, and refresh our memories about the sponsoring process, if, you have been, if you're new in the business, two days old, three days old, if you've been there for five years, if you've been there for 20 years, even 30 years, this is a process we go through for getting new people in the business. You start with the prospects list. At the beginning, everybody you meet is a suspect until they've shown an interest in either becoming friends with you or is interested in the business, they become a prospect. We recommend a hundred names. Then secondly, you invite them to have a look at the business. We suggest three to five daily. It means three to five people every day, you invite them to look at the business. Some of them will, some of them won't, but it's important for you to keep on inviting them to look at the business and use tools as much as possible. And then you invite them to look at the business opportunity presentations, where either yourself you're doing it one-on-one -on -one, or you've got somebody more experienced doing a, a group meeting, explaining the business, how the business works. Then after the business presentation, you have to do a follow-up. Follow-up simply means you ask the person who has had a look at the business, if one, they understood the business idea. Number two, what made an impression on them? What made, um, what did they like more about the business? The business, the products, or a bit of both? And then number, once you've asked them those, they will come to a decision. Yes, they want to start, they arrange to get a kit, a business starter kit, or they want to be customers, or they are not interested in the business at all. So those are the three options. And this process, you have to persevere in the process. Now, if you will permit me, I want to share something else with you about the importance of persevering in the business. This business in the short term is not predictable. What does that mean? It means that any one person you speak to, you don't know if they will say yes, or they will say no, or they will say they want to think about it, okay? So it's very, very important that you realize that the people you're bringing into the business, some of them may actually not be, if you give me a moment, let me just expand this uh, chat. This is the effort versus the income in the business. It's very important, if you want success in this business, one of the things you need to have is patience. Patience, perseverance, determination. Those things are very important for the long-term success. Because when you start the business, you can intellectually see that if you introduce three people in the business, those three introduce three each. Every month you keep on this. By the end of the year, that is a very high figure. But it does not happen in practice. Something else happens in practice. This chart shows a very simple example. The effort you put in the business when you get started. When you start in the business, because you don't know much about the business, you are still learning what to do in the business. That's why the effort is still low. But as soon as you've acquired some of the skills, you acquire the attitude and the knowledge of building the business, your effort of the, the effort you put in the business keeps increasing. That does not directly translate to the income you, you get in the business. 
That's why it's very important to know that although there's a direct link between effort and income in the long term, in the short term, it is not. In fact, I, I was listening to Eric Porter one time and he was saying that when you start the business, you do much more than you're paid. As the business grows, you will do much, you're paid according to how much you do. But if you persevere for a very long time, you'll be paid much more than what you do. And this is reflected in this simple, this simple uh, graph. In initially, there'll be little effort because you're new, you're trying to find your feet, how to do the business, your, your sponsor is teaching you how to, is holding your hand, teaching you to do the basics, um, writing a list, contacting people, inviting them to look at the business, attending the business presentation, doing a follow-up, and getting people started, understanding the marketing plan. Then as you gain experience and knowledge and skill, your effort increases. As your effort increases, it reaches a certain level where the amount of effort actually begins to reduce as your income starts to increase. And the reason for that is duplication begins to take effect. That means that the people in your team be, uh, have started learning how to multiply or to duplicate what you do. Around, there's, a, there's a period of about two to five years that the income overtakes the effort that you put in the business. And I think this is, this is one of the reasons a lot of people quit the business too early. I assure all of you, in the short term, this business is not predictable. It means that this business in four months, six months, you will not get the equivalent of the effort you put. But over the long term, this business is predictable. It simply means if you so, in fact, our business follows three rules. One is the rule of the rule of the law of sowing and reaping. If you keep sowing, you're going to reap. Number two is the law of increasing returns. It simply means that if you plant one seed, you will not harvest one. Otherwise, there's no use of planting it. But you need to keep planting the seeds so that you get more. See, if you plant one corn, you get a whole crop, a whole bushel. That simply means you get more than you simply, uh, what you, you harvest more than you, you, you planted. And the last law is the law of delayed gratification. This is, I think, is where we get the biggest challenge in this business, is that we don't have the patience to wait until we actually begin to see the result of our effort. So the income initially will be very low. You're putting a lot of work. You don't see much uh, return. In fact, your business could grow very quickly and then level up and drop, but you need to persevere because payday is coming. In fact, I would say that you've earned all the money here at the beginning, but you're only collecting here later on at two, three, four, five, six years in the business. So don't quit until payday comes. Payday will come. That is for sure. Payday is going to come. If things are not working very well, don't worry. Just keep talking to people because you're actually planting seeds. You're actually looking for leaders. You're actually looking for people who can see the vision that you see. So this graph will give an idea of the power of perseverance. You need to keep recruiting people in the business. That's the first thing. The other thing I want to recommend to you is this. Those of you who have been in the business for quite a while, I just want to see by a show of hands, how many of you in the next six months would like to recruit a potential uh, Ruby director? If you'd like to do that, just put your hands up. I can see that almost the whole screen is lighting. Everybody would like to recruit a Ruby director in their business in the next three months. I, I would like to share with you my experience. 
I see all of you are saying, okay, I want to just, this is, this is my advice. You actually need three types of people in your, if you get leaders in your business the next three months, in three months time, they'll all qualify as directors and you will not have anybody in your nursery to help you qualify as a director. And the reason I say that is that our marketing plan is structured in such that you need three kinds of people to have a stable business. Number one, you need people whom we call customers. Those are people who join the business, but they don't want to do any business at all. They don't like talking to people. They just want to use quality products. That is the first type of people. The second type of people, these are people who join the business. They want to recruit two or three people uh, within four months. They, they are not very keen on building a big team. They want to build just a small team and they are satisfied with it. Those are called the plotters. These are the people help you do your 4,000 PV. And then you need the leaders. These are people who join the business, see the vision and grab the business and run with it. These are the people who help you take steps in the business. I will give you an example of what happened to us. Betty and I started in March. And in April, we recruited uh, John Cesar Mwangi and Joshua and Dockers Ouma. And then Joshua and Dockers Ouma, when we became managers, they were managers. When we became senior managers, they became senior managers in the same month. When we became executive managers, they became executive managers. When we became directors, they became directors. When we became SAFA directors, they became SAFA directors. When we became one Ruby, they also became one Ruby directors. That gave us a lot of pressure because now we needed to constantly build a new team to help us qualify. And out of that leg of Joshua Dockers Oma is what we have our largest team in Kenya. The Njerus, the Karaoke's, the Cheges, the, the Ndungus, all those people are in one leg. So if you want to, uh, uh, if you get leaders very early in your business, you need to be really building quickly to get new people in your team. That is why I, I would suggest that you need to constantly recruit people in your you need to be very consistent and persevering in recruiting big, new people in your business because they help you grow your nursery all the time. So if you have people in your team who are runners, make sure you not only run like Elliot Kipchoge, but you also need to be able to sprint like you send Bolt because those people, those people um, who are running very fast at one time, they're going to actually overtake you. Not that they'll get out of your business, but you need also to have a separate team that you qualify with 4,000 PV so that you can actually take your steps to world team members. So you need to think through your, your business. If you have runners all who join your business, you are, in a, you are going to be in a very exciting challenge. That means you need to have other new people to grow and qualify in your business. The other thing I want to say, I want to speak about is this. Apart from having patience in the business, is you need to know without any shadow of a doubt, one, this business works. Two, this business works if you work it. Number three, this business does not follow your timetable. It took me a long time to actually accept that I, I could see it, but emotionally and mentally, I didn't accept it. It took me a long time to accept that this business will not follow your timetable. This business follows its own timetable. Is it predictable? Yes, in the long term. In the short term, it's not predictable, all right? So, it requires you to actually keep prospecting and recruiting new people in the business. Constantly do the basics all the time. Specialize in the basics. Make sure you master the basics. Make sure you learn how to speak to new people in odd places. If you go to the airport, if you take a, a taxi or a matatu, 
if you're in the bus, if you're in the bank, if anywhere you are, always learn to meet new people because these are the people who are going to make, a, 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 who are going to be your friends, eventually we join your business and we let you help you to grow your business. Okay, so persevere in your recruiting process. Don't stop. There's one thing that I, I read a long time ago and it has never left my mind. The lifeblood of our business is new people. Those are the people who make our business grow. Those are the people who make our dreams become true. New people, always. And treat every new person as if he is the only person in your team. Treat them with respect, with affection. Uh, don't do for them what they can do for, for, the, for themselves. Let them make their own mistakes so that they can grow. All right? And that leads me to something else called self-talk. I'm sure all of you have heard of the word self-talk very many times. Um, I don't know if you paid attention on what it actually means, all right? Now, um, we have been speaking about persevering in the business for a long time in recruiting. If you want to develop very long-term success in life, not just in this business, in life, Develop your imagination. That is your mental capacity to create pictures of what you want the future to look like. It is very simple, but it's not easy because I have tried it many times. It is not easy to sit down quietly and create mental pictures of the things you want in the future. Because once you quiet it down, memories of things that have happened in the past come in your mind. Then you start listening to several talks. Then you start imagining things. You hear noise somewhere, you get distracted. It's not easy. It takes time to quiet down and actually build mental pictures of the things that you want. Remember, the imagination is far more powerful than the will. Some of you, I'm sure all of you have experienced this. You go home at night, and it's dark and you open the door and you hear a noise. Once that happens, you are terrified because your mind starts creating mental pictures of the worst thing that can happen. That's how the mind works. And then it, the whole process grabs your, 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 your mind and you become fearful. That is how the imagination works. You create mental pictures of the worst thing that can happen. So you need to reverse the process because now this you can do consciously. Take time, create your own dreams and visions. Every day, take some time, quiet down, close your eyes and start creating mental pictures of the things that you want. Because worry is when you create mental pictures of the things that you do not want. So create mental pictures of the things that you want. Exercise. Mentally visualize the next convention, which is coming in two months. Visualize yourself going to the convention with your team. The second thing you need to do for long-term success is know yourself, know your temperament. You know your temperament. What is your attitude towards time? Your attitude towards money? Um, which of the four temperaments is yours? Are you a choleric, a bossy, driven? Or are you a melancholy paying attention to detail? You always want everything at the best. Or are you a sanguine who is always excited about things? Or are you phlegmatic, taking things very easy, no hassle, nothing seems to be in a hurry? Then pay attention to your emotions also. Know yourself. Um, when you're going through stress, pay attention to how you're feeling. When people say no to you about the business, do you hold grudges against them? Think about these things and then have very long-term success, okay? Have long-term goals that will help you to grow to the level that you want. Financial, keep it. You need to learn how to make money, to keep it and to grow it. Learn about the fundamentals of leverage, how to invest money. Some of you who have already reached uh, President Cinemas will know that when you start really becoming successful in this business, there is too much money at the end of the month. What do you do with this money? 
learn to make it grow. And then you need to, to, you need to have goals which helps you to function. Uh, they are called functional goals. Your physical health, this is exercise, diet, and rest. Then you need to study constantly. Then you need to have mental fitness, okay? Apart from your personal dreams, contribute to society. These are the things that will help you have a high time achievement. But the other thing is this, let's talk about self-talk. What is self-talk? Self-talk is a conversation you have with yourself every day. All of us, without doubt, you have a self-talk. Why? Because when you're in the, when you're in when, when you're traveling and you're not talking to anybody, you're talking to yourself. Uh, when you're at home, when you're in the bath, you're talking, you're talking to yourself all the time if you're not talking to somebody. The first step of having a, a, a positive self-talk is to be aware of your own thoughts. Are you aware of the dominant thoughts in your mind? In fact, a very simple way to determine how your life is going to turn out, once you're aware of your thoughts, which are the dominant thoughts in your mind? That will give you a very simple and clear indication of where your life is heading. So be aware of your thoughts. And once you're aware of your thoughts, start being aware of the negative ones and replace them with the positive ones. I'll give you a very simple example. You wake up in the morning on time, you get out of bed. Let, let me say you do your prayer, you go and exercise, then you set your day for for you start setting the day to make appointments to see people. And then you take out your list and you see one person's name whom you've been avoiding to call for three, three weeks now. At that moment, you need to be aware. Why am I afraid to call this person? If I call them, are they going to throw a rock at me? Or are they going to abuse me? You need to actually examine why you are not calling some of the people in your list. Once you've, you've understood, okay, I'm avoiding to call this person because I'm afraid of hearing the word no. What is the next thing you do? All right, supposing they say no, what next? If you use that simple process, you're going to be aware of actually what is holding you back from growing your business. Next thing is set clear goals. Don't say I want a lot of money. You see. A lot of money, if you say you want a lot of money, for Charlie Bolton, $5,000 is not a lot of money. But $5,000 for somebody who is a director now is a lot of money. So it's relative. I'd like you to set very clear goals. The amount of money you want to earn, the level of pin you want to be when you go to Mauritius, uh, the size of house you want to build, uh, which car you, do you want to buy? What color? What make? How much is it? Does it have interior leather? Does it have a four-wheel drive? All those details. Next step, read your goals daily. Why? Because the more you read them, the more they get imprinted in your subconscious mind. Then have a gratitude list. A gratitude list is a list of the things that you are thankful for. In fact, one of the things that really shapes your attitude is your gratitude. If you have a gratitude list, write, I could say read it, but my, from my own experience, writing your gratitude list is much, much more effective than just reading it. Because when you write something down, messages are sent from your fingers through your nervous system to your brain, physically. Okay, and that helps to reprogram your, 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 your mind or your brain for the better. And then when you do your self-talk, do your self-talk in first person, first person present tense. Okay, that's a spelling mistake. First person present tense, what do I mean by that? If you're a senior manager, you need to be saying, I am a director. Why? Because the brain only understands the present. Remember, what has happened in the past doesn't exist. It's only your memory. What will happen in the future is only in your imagination. What you have at the moment is the present time. Okay? So write your self-talk as 
first person present tense, as if you've already achieved what you want to do. And read it aloud twice or three times a day. That will begin to reprogram your mind for success. That's why self-talk is very, very, very important in success. All of us do self-talk anyway. Why don't you take time to examine your thoughts? Set clear goals, read them daily, have a gratitude list, and then write down your self-talk in first person present tense, and then read positive books. This is designed to help you reprogram your mind for success. Remember that action depends on three things. Number one is what you know, that is intellectually. Number two, your emotions or your feelings towards what, what you're doing, that is comes from your heart. And number three is doing it through your will, that is your hand. So remember the three H's, from your head, to your heart, to your hands. If you combine those three things, you're going to be very successful. So remember that success, be, success happens when those three aspects of your being are all integrated in the same action. What you know that is intellectual, what you know in your head. Number two, what you love or what the emotions you have about what you're doing, your heart. And number three, the will to do it, which means your hands. Combine those three things. And if you keep doing that, nobody will stop you from becoming successful in this business. So ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank all of you very much for spending this evening with Betty and myself. I am sure today is the 